Greetings and welcome to Emerging Tech Talk, a Voxeo podcast on emerging technology issues. I'm your host, Dan York, and today, December 9th, 2008, we are delighted to make a major announcement in that Voxeo has acquired a company called Voice Objects, based in Cologne, Germany. And here to talk with us about what that means is Voice Objects co founder, uh, Michael Codini. So, first of all, welcome to the Voxeo team, Michael. Well, Dan, thank you very much. Uh, I'm really excited to be part of the Voxeo family, and uh, this is a great day today. Act, yeah, so for those who are not familiar with Voice Objects, tell us a bit about what is Voice Objects all about. Oh, sure. Well, you know, Voice Objects has been founded back in 2001, and at that time when Voice XML came out, we realized there's some, you know, gap in the market in terms of building sophisticated tools and middleware. Actually, we aimed to be the BA that logic for the telecommunications world, and uh, so we have worked hard to build a really robust platform on top of the Voice XML stack, and that's what we have today. Cool. So, who are some of the customers or people that are using voice objects right now? Well, a variety of folks. Uh, initially, we started with a couple of Lighthouse accounts in financial services. Uh, so, Postbank. Germany's largest retail bank is one of our first clients, and they have deployed this massively in their data centers. As well as Deutsche Telekom, which you know is the fixed and mobile operator for the German market. One of the uh, units is T-Mobile. So essentially, they helped us to build a truly on-premise, carrier-grade solution, and uh, that's where we are today. Cool. So if I'm a developer, you know, what does this, what does Voice Objects look like? What do I, what do I use? How does it all work? Yeah, it depends what you want to use. Essentially, we do offer um, a server-based middleware, which comes with a lot of APIs and XML interfaces. So it's all Java-based technology with uh, web services-driven uh, access. At the same time, you get um, UIs, so the tools um, around voice objects, which is primarily based on Eclipse. Um, actually, there's a free download site where you can download the product. Uh, at developers.voiceobjects.com, so anyone can go there and check it out. Yeah, I downloaded it myself actually to go and play with it. Pretty neat stuff. So basically, you're for all those Eclipse developers, they can now move into creating voice applications very easily. Exactly, and you know that's what we learned from Voxeo initially, where you know the Prophecy product was uh, provided as a free offer uh, to a worldwide developer community, and we said, you know, well, this is cool. We should do the same thing. And actually, we copied uh, the approach you guys have taken much earlier, uh, and we've seen significant success this year um, with this approach. Cool. Now, what kind of applications are people developing with voice objects? So the primary focus is really customer care. Uh, it's all about self-service applications. Um, the majority of folks in you know in our space is primarily the the, the operators, uh, mobile carriers. Uh, large brands like o Telefonica O2, uh, Orange, uh, T-Mobile, Vodafone, etc. And um, those guys built truly um, self-care portals, uh, primarily using speech recognition technology because they have a variety of products they need to service through their phone portals. And you know, just recently we added something what we call meanwhile unified self-service, so extending the reach for self-service application. Uh, through other touch points, so you can utilize a mobile web browser, uh, you can do texting, or you can do video calls, and all going through the same application definition, all going back to the same application server. That's very cool. So what excited you about Voxeo, or what brought you the merger of the two companies? What's most interesting to you? Well, that's a good question. Uh, honestly, I think the time is over of enterprise software sales, um, and that was primarily our sales model at Voice Objects. Uh, the future is going to be uh, software as a service, or at least hybrid, so basically a combination of uh, on-premise and hosting. And therefore, I think uh, Voxia was the, the first choice for us uh, to you know, find a new home for the technology. And what's also very exciting is the team, obviously. I think there's a great cultural fit between the Voxia team and the Voice Objects team. And uh, again, I'm really excited uh, to make this integration going forward and uh, let's see what we can deliver in the future. Cool. Now, so what's next for Voice Objects? You're obviously joining in with Voxeo now. What's, where do you see the product evolving or what do you see happening now that you're part of the Voxeo team? Well, first of all, we don't 
do too many changes in a moment. We will continue the product as it is, and I think that's the freedom which you know is delivered to us uh, from the Voxeo side that we can continue our business, continue the technology, execute our roadmap. Uh, obviously, we'll then take a closer look how we combine the offer. What I expect is that there will be a hosted version pretty soon available of voice objects technology. There will be also different pricing options rather than you can go only through an enterprise license deal. Uh, so therefore, I'm excited to have you know a broader perspective on how we can bring the technology to market. And um, I think we will see a couple of announcements uh, in the first quarter of 09. Great. Yeah, you, you hit an interesting point too, which is that with voice objects now, your application server for developing apps will also work with other um, media servers and app application and execution environments. Right. So that, could you talk a bit about how that works? Yeah, so think about this. You know, when we started the business uh, at voice objects, we realized, well, you know, the browser and voice XML is all going to be standardized. But my personal background is the database industry. So I worked in data warehousing and business intelligence for almost 10 years before I founded with a couple of other folks voice objects. So I realized what standardization at the bottom line means. So working with SQL as one of the equivalents to voice XML. Um, so therefore, you know, I saw, well, it's a standard, but bottom line, it comes in different flavors. Um, you know, every vendor is going to extend the standard here and there. So the way how we were dealing with this is primarily building a so-called driver approach, pretty much like a printer driver. So, you know, if you write a document in Word, you don't care if you finally print this out on, on an inkjet or on a laser jet. In the same sense, we said, well, if you want to build an app, you really want to, don't care if you deploy this on Genesis or you deploy it on Nortel, Avaya, or the, on the Voxeo hosting platform. You would expect in all cases that the application will do the same job. And that's what we've done, what we have done. Oh, that's very cool. Well, welcome to Voxeo. I look forward to working with you and the rest of the team. And uh, where can, again, people find your software? Excellent. Well, thank you very much. I've been speaking with Michael Codini, who is one of the co-founders and is now uh, in charge of the voice objects unit within Voxeo. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Dan. Thank you for watching another episode of Emerging Tech Talk. If you'd like more information about voice objects in general, you can go to www.voiceobjects.com. As Michael indicated, there is a free developer version available at developers.voiceobjects.com. If you'd like to know more about what this means for Voxeo customers and developers, uh, please watch blogs.voxeo.com for articles that will be appearing today, December 9th. If you have questions about this, feedback, etc., you're welcome to send them to me directly by email to dyork at voxeo.com, or you can leave them as replies to this show's blog post up on blogs.voxeo.com slash ETT. Thank you for watching, and until another time, this is Dan York signing out.